today is snake safety. Don't try that at home. This is how simple snake bite first aid is. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today is gonna to be a fun one. It's all about snake season, because things are warming up. The temps have rise yesterday, 26 degrees. All this week's looking beautiful. So reptiles, they're gonna start smashing food, snakes in particular, and then they're gonna think about breeding. So I thought I would take the opportunity to sort of talk all things snake season, whether it's first aid, what to do in your backyard, if you see a snake at home, um, all that exciting stuff whilst I'm milking Eastern Browns. The most critical thing you wanna know is snake bite first aid, all right? So that's super important. We will look at that in a sec. I'm just gonna milk this fella. Um, and not just you that knows first aid, but the whole family, all right? Um, make learning first aid fun, all right? <laughs> Look at that. So if you, this is a great example here. So if you approach a snake like this in your backyard, like an Eastern Brown, this snake was caught out of someone's backyard, Watch as I approach, he drives towards me and sort of, he's trying to, in, I guess, put the wind into me, get away from me, I'm gonna bite. And as soon as I step back, see, he went away then. This is that whole, you know, just snakes chase ya. Well, that was a good line, this was right up in my face. But then he's just looking for a gap to get away as soon as I move away from him. But again, if I move close, he strikes and carries on. And if I, you know, if I was to annoy him, you know, someone in the backyard with a shovel or so on, um, that's gonna really annoy that snake and it's gonna make him wanna defend himself. Man, that was some great strikes there. Don't try that at home, all right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, but you notice, because like, as soon as I stepped away from him, he just moved away, all right? He doesn't wanna waste his venom on me. He can't eat me. Um, but yeah, well, if you see one in the backyard and you approach it, he's gonna do that, all right? Keep trying to... Annoy him, provoke him, might bite ya. Leave him alone, call a snake catcher, much better option. Oh, look at that, over half a pet, one thing. Oh, <laughs> glad he didn't connect with any of those strikes. <laughs> Holy Toledo. Oh man, that's one of the best brown snake yields I've seen in months. He's done well over half a pet there. That would probably kill every single person at the reptile park at the moment. Probably more, probably three times over. Like you imagine one tiny little drop of that will kill 90 people. Whoa. I like log our venom data so I can see who are the better milkers and who aren't the better milkers. Um, and like in the future, if I'm gonna breed from those snakes, they're the ones I wanna breed with, the ones that are better milkers. Generally, they're bigger snake. But that snake is not, oh, see that? He's worked up. Yeah, snake bite first aid, okay? Let's play a little bit of a drill on Logan. Oi, Logan, I've been bitten. Come and bandage me. I've been bitten. Oh, you brought a bandage, good man. So this is what you do in a snake bite? Where are you? Okay, I've been bitten on my right wrist right here. Right there. Don't panic, mate. I'm not, are you panicked? No, I'm relaxed. Oh, good pressure. So Logan, what he's doing, he went over the bite site three times and then he did a wrap just below and he's slowly just scooting up my arm there and he's gonna get this one on then he's gonna put that second bandage on. All right. This is how simple snake bite first aid is. Like it's seriously easy stuff. Ah, he just ripped my arm hairs out. That's right. Don't do that. Oh. And don't do that. Yeah. Fail. I, in this, if this was real, real life, I'd bandage myself because um, it'd just be way quicker. Like I would have just literally thrown a snake in the enclosure, grabbed a bandage right there and just got a, 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 um, it around my arm. As you can see, you don't have to worry about taking the shirt off. Just go straight over the sleeve like so. Good pressure. Venom will travel 10 centimetres a minute for your lymphatic system without a pressure mobilisation bandage, all right? 
we apply one of these and it slows the movement down dramatically. I'm talking this buys you hours of time. What are we doing now? Wheelchair. So the more movement I do, um, the venom's still gonna move a little bit, all right? So for here at the park, you know, we practice this all the time. He would get me into the wheelchair and then he'd take me out the side doors here, let's go. What, what did you forget? Need a radio reception. And what else? Um, the first aid kit. The anti-venom? Yep. Yep. Grab the kit, let's go! I'm dying. I'm not actually. Um, and this is how easy it is. So we bandage in the wheelchair, obviously at home. Oh, cheers, mate. We come prepared here. Yeah, so at home, most people are gonna just have a wheelchair, but you know, you just call triple zero, they might come to you, or if you're a long way from a hospital, um, you can start making your way towards it and, and emergency services will meet you on the side of the road, okay? Make sure you pull up for emergency services. They're geared with what they need to do to keep you going. That's why we talk about snake bite first aid so much, and that's why we do demos in all our presentations every single day, because it's serious stuff, you know? Um, but it's so basic and it's something everyone can learn, you know, so um, I've already started teaching my, my oldest daughter She's four next month and she's already learning how to put a pressure bandage on. All right um, We take them everywhere we go. All right. This is Australia. Okay, so there's snakes everywhere Literally, there is nowhere in Australia that you can go about finding a snake. All right, always be prepared. No first aid um, You don't need to have your own anti-venom kit at home. The hospitals are well equipped with that All right. Thanks, Logan. Oh, good. Nice action. Good, good bandage technique. So, the different areas around Australia, you're going to encounter different snakes, but the highly venomous groups are literally right across Australia, surrounding islands. Um, you know, you're not going to get away from them. The most common venomous snake in southeast Queensland is an eastern brown. And if you're going to encounter a snake in the backyard around there, it's either going to be an eastern brown or a carpet python, all right? Right here on the central coast, um, it's going to be a couple of species. It could be a diamond python, it could be a common tree snake, it could be a marsh snake. You know, got the mid-north coast from here. Death adders are really common along a lot of the beaches up there. So are eastern browns go all the way to central Australia, Alice Springs. Um, you're looking at king browns, western brown snakes. Um, and a few, it's like out there it's like more venomous snakes and non-venomous snakes that you're gonna, you're gonna come across. We, in Australia, we are the only country in the world with more venomous snakes and non-venomous snakes, but some areas it'll vary where you might find more non-venomous species and venomous species, but in, in general, like I was saying, um, yeah, <laughs> everywhere in Australia you're gonna come across something highly venomous, all right? There's just certain habitats that will keep certain venomous snakes there more than, than others. Um, yeah, and even like Tassie, Tasmania. Sorry, Tasmania, you've only got three snake species and they're all venomous, okay? So, and two of them can kill you. Um, so that's the tiger snake, lowland copperhead, and the white lip snake. So the white lip snake's like one of those mildly or weakly venomous species that probably most people have never heard of, and that's the case with a lot of our small lapids in Australia. There's species there that people have never even heard of. And right now is when they really start moving, okay? so. When it comes to trying to make your yard snake proof, very hard to do, um, but you can reduce things. And I, and I know I've talked about this with you guys in the past, like reducing rubbish piles. You know, at the end of winter, like if you've got a fireplace at home and you've got the timber stack in the backyard, move it out of the way or get rid of it because that's where they're gonna camp up. Woo, this snake's a bit, how you going? Just bear with me a sec here. We, we, very jumpy. Hey, very jumpy today, mister. Just let me focus on getting this fella to the pin and pad. A lot of these boys really start to fire up um, this time of year. All right, so, gonna go old lefty Lucy here. I've only done I think the petting with a brown snake once left-handed, which was on one of these videos. All right, so he looks like he's actually, he's 
just starting to go opaque. And he's probably about to shed his skin. Probably doesn't want to give me... Oh, look at that! He didn't want to give me nothing out of that other thing, but he made up for it there. So yeah, with rubbish piles and so on, reduce them. Stacks of tin, they love. They're like a snake hotel. So they hold that heat, you know. Um, and other animals, again, will shelter under them. Keep your lawns mowed. Um, gardens tidy. Even just like those green waste piles. Like, you know, one of the worst things is for, for, well, sorry, one of the best things for snakes and worst thing for you if you don't want snakes in your backyard. Um, are people with lots of palm trees or coconut trees, they get those palm frond piles going on, they love them and they lay their eggs in them as well. So, um, yeah, reduce that sort of stuff, all that waste. Now, you've probably seen online and I always see people selling them in shopping centres in, you know, those little made-up stores in the middle of shopping centres, especially around Christmas time, snake deterrent devices, all right? And they're like a little post with a round disc and there's a solar panel on top and they, you push them in the ground and they vibrate, right? They create heat. Every single year, snake catchers go to people's backyards with snakes curled up on top of them getting the heat, okay? So they're a massive fail. Don't listen to um, the people trying to sell them to you because they literally don't work, okay? Um, ooh, he's getting a bit of size, this fella. Hey, hey, hey. Right. Oh, um, oh no, come on, turn, yep, I'm not doing you left-handed, mate. Ooh. Yeah, so um, don't listen to uh, the people trying to sell it. Oh, whoa, look at that, can't even see the fang, it's so small, and we got almost half of it. You ripper. Um, other safety stuff we should talk about with snake safety or snake season is correct clothing, all right? Now, I'm going to con contradict myself a little bit here because I'm going to say wear long pants and I know you're watching me not, not wearing long pants. But I find they restrict me heaps when I'm dancing around with brown snakes, all right? So um, I don't wear them and I wear short sleeves because I get really hot in here. Like, this room is sitting at about 26 degrees at the moment. 27. There you go. Um, so it gets hot in here, all right? So um, I'm constantly working on my reflexes and stuff to avoid um, nibbles. <laughs> Most bites are feet, legs, hands, forearm. So yeah, good boots. Um, Good boots, long pants, long sleeves. Always carry a bandage. The survival first aid snake bike kits are to go. Um, and you can even wear those gaiters. So they're those like, they wrap up over your pants. They're really thick. Um, they're really good as well. So this is one we weighed recently in that video and he's, he was like over a kilo, I think, which is massive for a brown snake. So, but not only he's got the weight, he's got the length now and the attitude, so ooh, I definitely think, oh, I'll have a go at the size of him. That is a big brown snake. Look how thick he is, he's so alert. And again, this is one of those southeast Queensland snakes caught by Sunshine Coast snake catchers in someone's backyard where it was unreleasable, and so they sent it to us. All right. Woohoo! Wee, don't bite me down there. You know a fella actually got bitten on his old mate by a brown snake years and years ago. He, he bandaged, this is like 20 years ago, he bandaged, went to hospital, full envenomation, kept old mate, didn't lose it, and um, got antivenom and survived. Isn't that a yarn? Imagine telling that at the pub. No one would believe you. <laughs> got bitten on... Lee Johnson, and survived. Bah, look at that. Woo, alrighty. So, he's got me in a leg lock. <coughs> this guy knows his jujitsu. Alrighty. 
Okay, so in there. Hey, mate, what's going on? This guy lost part of his tail when he was still in the wild. See that? Bitten off. Um, he's actually got a few scars on him, this bloke. It doesn't affect him at all. I couldn't tell you the amount of times I've caught snakes in the wild that have um, had parts of their tails missing. Um, from usually attempted predation events, maybe a goanna grabbed him by the tail, or it could be something like he might have got clipped by a car, who knows. Um, if only he could communicate, I reckon he'd have some good yarns, this bloke. Alright, so, you know, there's a lot of, unfortunately, social media, social media is great, but it put, people see stuff on there and they think that it's true, alright, and sometimes it's, sometimes it's not, so it's hard to know, but when it comes to snake facts, there's a lot of wrong facts getting around, oh, another good yield, mate. A lot of wrong facts getting around about snakes, and one in particular is how to identify a venomous snake. And the one chart I've seen, if it's got a rounder head, it's not venomous. If it's got like a more of a sharper diamond type head, it's venomous. It's not the case at all, okay? So all snakes right across the world have all got different shaped heads. Um, so this guy's got a short blunt head. That's pretty typical for a brown snake. Um, you can see he's got that black, couple of black marks on his head there. Um, he's got those really nice orange spots on his belly, but brown snakes don't always have those orange spots. Okay, some have absolutely none. Some have no black marks on their head. Some are covered in black bands, all right? So the best thing to do if you see a snake, assume it's venomous, okay? Um, don't listen to your granddad telling you that it's not venomous, that it's the old carpet snake or whatever. Um, just treat, treat all snakes like they're venomous, okay? Best thing to do. Alrighty guys, that is going to be it for this episode. Remember, snake safety. Look out for your friends, your family. If you see a snake in your backyard, don't touch it. Don't muck around with it. Call local snake catcher, all right? Learn your first aid. Um, stay vigilant out there. It's going to be a warm summer, they reckon, all right? So there's going to be plenty of snakes moving around. Alrighty guys, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. You know the deal. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next episode. <laughs>